So, it has been a busy week for all things European. David Cameron was sent to the naughty step by Angela Merkel for complaining about the budget ambush, just as Nigel here was showing his distress at the latest demands from Brussels. <laughs> Meanwhile, his new defectors from the Tory party, like Mark Reckless, were getting lessons from UKIP veterans on how to promote their local areas. The world! You, you, look, I'll just... Gordon. How's Gordon? Listen, <laughs> it's a dump. It's oh. a dump. <laughs> you can't talk about that like Croydon, about Croydon like that even. Later in the programme we'll be talking about the European budget ambush and the Prime Minister's latest promise to restrict freedom of movement. And in the run-up to Halloween we'll be finding out what frightens our panel. Could it be the Ed Miliband bacon butty bodysuit or even the Nigel Farage mask, all available on the internet. But first, should we all lighten up a bit? The UKIP Calypso rendition had got to number 44 in the charts last night, despite being withdrawn from sale midway through the week. Mike Reed, who performed it, said it was old-fashioned satire, and Nigel Farage that it was a bit of fun, but it obviously provoked a very strong reaction. In the meantime, David Baddiel here has been pushing the boat out with his musical, The Infidel. So, how come it's okay for David to take the mickey out of religion, but it's not okay for Mike Reed to pretend he's from the Caribbean? What is offensive? Boris, how's the apologising going? Uh, it's, I would say that it's been mixed so far. Most, most members of the public have been friendly, apart from a chap who gave me a V-sign just now. Uh, quite rightly, I suppose. I'm just a song whose intentions are good. Oh, calm down, dear. Calm down. Calm down. <laughs> Yes, calm down, dear. I'll say it to you if you like. I was just quoting a pretty rubbishy commercial with Michael Burnett. It wasn't meant to cause offence. I'm not saying that we're better or greater or comparing us with Jesus Christ or just said what I said and it was wrong or was taken wrong and now it's all this. So whose intentions are good? Oh, is don't let me... This is unprecedented in its level of blasphemy. <laughs> Leaders committed a cardinal sin. Open the borders, let them all come in. Illegal immigrants in every time. I do not believe that that Calypso song of Mike's caused offence. <laughs> Nigel is at number 10. <laughs> So were any of you, David, maybe start with you, were any of you offended? By what? By, By the my own musical? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I really like well, that's it. where you're going wrong, you see. <laughs> the Calypso splendid. song. The Calypso song, I love the Calypso song as well. I thought it was unbelievably magnificent. The idea that, A, that it was a Calypso, like, and B, that it was by a DJ from the 1970s, that shining band of men, <laughs> and that it included the line, when we're in charge and the Prime Minister is Farage. I mean, you don't get lyrics like that. I really, honestly, I played it again and again and again, and I never stopped laughing. <laughs> I thought it was really hilarious, and no, I wasn't offended by it. I did th I'll tell you one thing about it that I thought was good, is that Mike Reed, on being asked, um, you know, why he did it in that voice, he said, well, I just don't think it would have been very good if I'd done it in a Sussex accent. And what I like about that is the idea that it was very good. <laughs> I, really, I, I, I love the, the assumption there. So, no, I wasn't, no, in any way offended. Well, I, was, I was overjoyed. Sorry, when you watched it for the first time, did your mouth not drop open? Because like, I, I wasn't offended, but I was so shocked at how offended some other people were going to be. Because, I mean, I worked for The Guardian for 12 years. So, like, I mean, I, I watched it and I just went... <laughs> 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 I was like, he's going to be in so much trouble. Were you know, people, and I, I did it worse. Well, some offended. people were. Were you I, offended, Sarah? No, I just thought it was quite, you're right, it was absolutely dreadful. Yeah. I mean, really terrible. But hilariously song. so. But very, very funny, and but, some very inventive rhyming. But was it deliberately designed, you think, to rile what he would call I, I the don't liberal know. elite? I think you should ask Nigel. Nigel no, was it no, it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, if he'd done How that. How did it song, come about? Can I just ask, uh, what was the we, backstory? He said at our um, annual conference at Doncaster that he wanted after dinner to do a turn. We said fine, and that's what he came up with. And we all <laughs> laughed, and no one took it terribly seriously. And then he said he wanted to release it as a single. And we tried not to laugh, yeah. and he decided he would. And actually, it was selling quite well um, until he came under more abuse for that than anything he's done in his whole career, including. Really? The, yep, I mean, no, I, I, and, and that is just ridiculous. Now, a lot of it happens on Twitter, obviously, and we know there's all the trolling that goes on. But why on. did he say sorry then if it was so benign? Uh, because it was starting to seriously affect his career in terms of the contracts and things that he does, and he was genuinely worried that this storm, something he'd done to be a bit of fun, 
would actually, you know, damage his future prospects. That's why the record was withdrawn. So the fact that it's got to number, number 44 and the fact you can't buy it means it must be doing rather well. I mean, really. to be honest, it's a lot less... Of, sorry, I'm going to put my little feminist hat on here, and I'm going to say it's a lot less offensive than a lot of the other stuff that's in the charts about women Ooh. and, you know, naked people jiggling their bottoms. I mean, yes, OK, perhaps it's a bit, you know, naughty and a bit silly, but there's a lot more that's a lot more offensive. There's a line in it about Jean-Claude Juncker, isn't there? It's like, like, you don't get that, no. do you, in rap songs? Well, it's you don't get it. <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost a recommendation to buy it, isn't I it? I understand why some people might have found some of the content in it, and I, it's slightly offensive if they, were, if they were against that politically. But it was the fact, I think fat people found him singing in a fake Jamaican accent. That's what they found offensive. But, you know, if I we're going to find, if we're gonna find that offensive, well, we're going to find Sting offensive. I know, so <laughs> I <laughs> it. We're going to find exactly. all of the work of UB40 yes. offensive. And yes. they're not taking that off yeah. me. And we're going to call Ali... We're going to call Ali G racist, yeah. and we're going to ban 10cc records. Okay, but, but, very silly. OK, right? but here's the interesting thing. What is offensive? Is it if someone gets offended, therefore it's offensive? I mean, we've, have we got too sensitive? Have we got too politically correct? I think we have got too sensitive. But, uh, but, but, but the nub of the argument was this was a white man from, in fact, Surrey, white man from Surrey, putting on, and it's not a Jamaican accent, because Calypso, no, Calypso comes from Trinidad, so there we are. Okay, so it's a Trinidadian sorry, accent. Yeah, but let's, no, let's, honestly, but let me, I thought you'd have known that, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just very racist. But, but obviously the reason people are sensitive about <laughs> these things is because, you know, there has been a lot of racism in the country in the past. I might argue there yeah. still is a lot of racism, and that's why people are sensitive about it. So, for example, is any white man blacking up his face and pretending to be a black man of its nature offensive? I don't think it is, no. And I think we've really gone too far with all of this. Uh, there is a huge difference between people causing offence and people doing what Mike Reed did, having a bit of fun. Or the other day when David Cameron was photographed with some people that were blacked up, you know, and actually the outrage there didn't last very long, I'm pleased to say. I think that blacking up is a completely different thing. I think once you push it to <laughs> blacking up, that's just such a big cultural, bi it's just such a big complex thing that you're going into a minefield there. What Black, about the whole... Blacking up is a very different thing to kind of singing a little bit like Sting. I mean, well, so, but, so, so, so it was quite a good record then. No, it was. <laughs> it was not no, a good record. All right, I accept that. Yeah. No, but what I'm trying to say, so, yeah. uh, take something like the black and white minstrels. Is, 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 is are some things of their very well, nature offensive? The white, which are... Well, the black and white minstrels were made, exi you know, they were a thing when mm. people were very racist. Yes. So I think that's why you, you look at them and you think, oh, that's not OK, because in those days, black people weren't, you know, were treated as second, third-class citizens. So I think, I think yeah. you have to see them in their sort of cultural context. I think virtually any thing that is put out could be perceived as being offensive in the way that people are very quick and find their identity, particularly on Twitter now, through outrage and through the idea that they have taken offence. However, I think that the, the problem is that... This is discussed a lot. It's discussed a lot in comedy. And really what you have to do is look at the individual thing. You cannot say, you can never make jokes about this. Mm. Whatever it might be. Okay, so you can make very, very funny jokes uh, about any race or religion that are not coming from a place of hate. You can also mm. make jokes about race and religion that are coming from a place of hate. You have to look at the and individual jokes. is that the key joke. distinction on the infidel? Because you've obviously, you know, you've walked that line and you've yeah. obviously done it, you know, people are coming to the show and liking it and they're not yeah. protesting outside. So no. you've obviously been conscious of making those decisions all the way along. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, the show is liked by Muslims and Jews, which is that's also liked by people who have, have no denomination or whatever. But actually, it's a slightly sixth form aspiration in art to want to offend anyway. The show wasn't really about trying to offend. The show was about trying to do a human feel-good story about a very difficult subject, which is racial tension. And it manages to do that. And it also manages to do something else, I think, which is it takes uh, groups that are often stereotypes and tries to subvert those stereotypes. So the, the, the main character is a Muslim who, in his first song, I'm a Muslim, sings, I'm a Muslim, don't despair, I haven't got a bomb in my underwear. And, okay. the, and the point of that is that he defines himself against the stereotype. Can I, ask, Grace, can I ask you at the end here, do you think that in a way this was quite useful for UKIP in helping it define itself against the so-called liberal elite? As in all these people think, well, they've just lost I, their sense of humour, they're too politically yeah, correct. Yeah, well, do you know something? Yes. Yeah. And I think that, I think that an awful lot of things that happen that make really, people really, really angry about UKIP are just very, very useful at making lots of other people in the country go that they empathise. And, that, and that's the truth.